What is going on guys, Ben Gluganier coming back at you with another video and today we're doing another mock draft. This is a pre-combine mock draft, of course, that is coming up within the next uh, week or so because players have reported to Indianapolis, uh, interviews are happening, things of that nature, and then of course next week we're actually going to see some of the drills and things like that, um, which pretty much all drills or, um, I mean, if you want to call like the vert and 40 a drill, I guess it technically is, but it's not really... Uh, a showcase of skill so much as it is athletic ability but that could change some things boost some stock at least with the media and i guess technically that's what i am at this point um but we're doing a two-round mock draft it's highly requested i'll talk my way through the first round a little bit uh, and then a little bit less so in the second round so this video is not an hour long hopefully it's much shorter than that uh and i think that it will be i would also like to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video audible of course, Audible is a sponsor for today's video. They're a fantastic company. This is a football channel. We all know that. Audible has some great selections as far as football content goes. They're not just audiobooks, even though they have the biggest collection of audiobooks out there. They've also got podcasts. And the current audiobook I am listening to is The Quarterback Whisperer. It's by Bruce Arians. It's you know talking about how to make these elite quarterbacks, what goes into it. Uh, not narrated by him, but the actual words are from him. Uh, and it's a lot of great insight onto kind of the back end of coaching and it's a great listen audible is just the absolute best when it comes to audiobooks or anything of that nature if you use code bangle you text that to 500 500 or go ahead into the description audible.com slash bangle you get started with a 30-day free trial you can decide if you want to become a member absolutely could not recommend it enough again text code bangle to 500 500 text bangle or go to audible.com slash bangle all the links are in the description that you're going to need. Fantastic service. Can't recommend it enough. If you're a football fan, I think you're going to like it a lot. But alas, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into this. I'm doing this all on the fly. So although there has been preparation, there's not exactly an immense amount of pre-planning I've done. So if you disagree with one of my picks, I'm sure you're going to let me know in the comments anyway. I'll try to explain it as much as I can uh, for some of these that are... Um, less self-explanatory. So with the first pick, Bengals are on the board. We're going to give them Joe Burrow. They need a quarterback for the future. I think Burrow is exactly that. Now, some measurements have already come out. Burrow with nine-inch hands. Some people are freaking out. I don't really think it's too much of a big deal. Uh, didn't really have fumbling issues in college. It's not like he's a wide receiver where that would be a little bit more important. I don't know. Don't really mind that too much. He can throw the football pretty well. He, he is incredible in the pocket as far as footwork movement goes. Uh, Burrow is a stud, accurate as all get out, and really smart. The Redskins at number two, another guy that's not participating uh, in the combine is Chase Young, other than interviews and medical testing and things of that nature. But he is probably the best player in the draft, one of the best edge rushers I've ever evaluated for sure. Chase Young is a stud, has the bend, has the burst, has the explosiveness, violent hands, uh, excellent positioning. Chase Young is incredible, does everything super, super well, um, requires multiple blockers at all time. I think he's the next best edge rusher in the NFL. Don't think that's too crazy to say. The Lions are number three. This is where you could say the draft actually begins because teams are going to move up. I don't know if the Redskins move down. No trades in this mock draft, just two rounds straight up, seeing what happens. And there are a number of players that they could take here. I think there are four Real possibilities. Derek Brown, if they want to improve their defensive tackle spot, they're cutting Damon Harrison. I think cornerback, they go Jeffrey Okuda if they want to improve cornerback. Darius Slay potentially on the trade block, and they really could use a cornerback on the boundary other than him as well, with Justin Coleman being more of a slot guy. Could also take Isaiah Simmons. Linebacker's a big need. He's someone they could move all around the field. Versatile, real talent. Or, and I think this is a smoke screen to get teams to trade up. Smokescreen, I think they could take a quarterback, which is either probably Justin Herbert to a Tungo Vailoa, maybe even Jordan Love, but I think the likelihood would be Tua, um, just given his stock as, as a QB. I don't think they're going to go quarterback. I think I think Okuda makes the most sense for them, so I'm going to go ahead and slot him in at number three. They get their franchise caliber CB. Patrick Peterson type player on the boundary. Great corner, great addition to their defense, which is really the uh, worst part of their team by a lot. Their secondary is pretty bad. Number four, I get the Giants, my favorite team. And now, as much as I would like to see them address defense here, other than Derek Brown, Derek Brown's a great player. I just don't want to see them take a defensive tackle. Um, far more impactful positions that the Giants need to fill 
on really both sides of the ball, but defense in particular. Isaiah Simmons would be my choice here. I would like the Giants to take him. Just another versatile guy that can really do it all and maybe be strong safety, situational will, maybe even your starting inside linebacker in that 3-4. I think Isaiah Simmons is a stud, someone you can move all around the field and can be effective in so many different roles. However, I think the Giants are going to take an offensive tackle, and I think it's going to be Jedrick Wills out of Alabama. Played right tackle at Alabama. The Giants need right tackle, someone that could eventually be groomed to move over to that left tackle spot, although you don't really see that happen too often, to be fair. But someone who could solidify that right side, athletic guy, big, um, high upside tackle. I think the Giants, and Dave Gettleman in particular, who loves to draft those guys in the trenches, would probably not hesitate to turn him to card. But I hope it's a defensive guy. But Jedrick Wills can be my pick here. At number five, I'm going to have the Dolphins take a quarterback that's going to be Tua Tungavailoa. It's annoying that it's Tungavailoa. I've been saying this quite a bit. Uh, it's not Tagovailoa. I know it looks like it, but he pronounces it Tungavailoa. I'm going to listen to him. He probably knows how to say his own name. As we move to the Chargers at number six, I think quarterback is, is a position that they would take here. And I think the draft board is going to change a lot up to this point. I think this is uh, a draft where we're going to see a lot of trades up into the top five, maybe two which is a lot. That's, you know, uh, two-fifths. Pretty significant. I don't know that Justin Herbert is available at six or that the Chargers are in that spot to take him. He could be available. That's that's likely, but I don't know that the Chargers are going to be in that spot to take him. Um, It's going to be interesting, but I'm going to give the Chargers a quarterback. No more Phillip Rivers. Herbert is my guy here. At number seven, I'm going to go Derek Brown. Panthers have a super weak defensive interior. Derek Brown's going to fill that in a big way. At number eight, Cardinals have two options here. Wide receiver, offensive tackle, in my opinion, with Derek Brown off the board, with Jeffrey Okuda off the board. I think it's either CeeDee Lamb or Jerry Judy, or it's a tackle in Mekhi Becton, in Tristan Wurst, in uh, Andrew Thomas. I mean, there, there are some options here. Could reunite Kyler Murray with CD Lamb. Favorite target at OU. And this is a tough choice. And doing this on the fly, you got to make these tough decisions. You got to make them quickly because I don't want this video to be super, super long. Um, and I mean, there's so many different ways this could play out when we actually get to the draft. I don't know, man. Uh, this one is tough. I'm going to say they prioritize wide receiver here and they take the Russell Wilson Seahawks approach and say he's mobile enough to figure it out on his own. So we're going to give him a receiver and um, we're going to ignore the, the storyline of bringing C.D. Lamb to Arizona. We're going to give them the better receiver prospect, in my opinion. That is Jerry Judy, best pure route runner in the draft. Jaguars are on the board at number nine, and Isaiah Simmons makes a ton of sense to slot in there at number nine. I don't think it's too crazy to think that he could fall out of the top five. He's a good player, but we don't usually see linebackers go incredibly high, and maybe him not having a defined position lowers his stock a little bit. Teams are uh, less sure that they want to take him, even though it's, it's incredible to have that versatile puzzle piece Maybe they choose not to go in that direction. Browns at number 10. You got to go tackle here. You have to go tackle. Now, it comes the question, which one do they prefer? It's again, Becton, Wirfs, Thomas, maybe even Josh Jones out of uh, Houston down the board they could go and take. It's going to be really, really interesting because I think tackle is so close in terms of uh, who the top one is and where you rank those guys inside the top five, I think there's definitely going to be some guys that go much higher or lower than you'd expect. Does Becton go here? He's got some great size, mauling ability, but I don't know. I feel like the Browns run block pretty well. Their pass block is a little bit of a concerning uh, thing. And, And I think the best pass blocker would be Andrew Thomas. And that's why I'm going to go ahead and give Andrew Thomas to the Browns there at number 10. I think that's probably his ceiling in the draft. I don't really think that he goes much higher than that. Definitely could, but I think 10 makes a lot of sense there. Jets, another position where they might go wide receiver or tackle. Probably not too many other options. Becton's available. I'm going to give them Mekhi Becton out of Louisville. Now, this could very easily, very easily be CeeDee Lamb or maybe even Henry Ruggs at wide receiver, but I'm going to give him a tackle. Got to protect Sam Darnold, but if they can't bring back Robbie Anderson, that could very easily be a receiver. Before free agency happens, it's kind of a, a bit of a guessing game, as I'm sure many of you can understand. Raiders at number 12. I don't think they hesitate to turn in the card and take C.D. Lamb there. Uh, one of the best receivers in the draft. He is an absolute stud. Raiders get themselves a very, very good player here. 13. Interesting, interesting spot for the Colts. Now, 
I've given them Jordan Love here a couple times. And then I've seen that happen more and more in mock drafts that other people have started to do. Um, and I'm going to actually mix it up here because given the potential, uh, not only talent, but uh, how do I want to phrase this? Given the variance in potential ability for these guys at QB in kind of a weird class with Jordan Love, maybe Jacob Eason down the board, maybe Jake Fromm later, I think they might be one of those teams that hesitates uh, hesitates to take a, a quarterback and settles for one in the second round, depending on who's available, unless they really like their guy and they say, hey, Jordan Love at number 13, we're going to take you. I think they go wide receiver here, and I'm going to give him Henry Ruggs. I think he's going to break the combine. I think he's going to run a ridiculously fast time, and his tape is excellent. He's a great route runner, catches the ball really, really well, great deep tracking. He is a monster, and then he's like an upgraded version of T.Y. Hilton, who has been so effective in Indianapolis for so many years. So Henry Ruggs is my guy there. Next up, 14. I'm going to give the Bucks Javon Kinlaw. Stud. I think there should be some conversation about Javon Kinlaw being DT1, IDL1, over Derek Brown. Derek Brown's a monster, don't get me wrong. Javon Kinlaw is very, very good, and I don't think there's as much variance in ability as some other people do. Kinlaw is a better athlete, better interior um, pass rusher and disruptor. The only thing is he doesn't really finish sacks as often um, as you might like to see. Derek Brown's a stud, don't get me wrong, but I think if you want more of a, a pass rusher, you go Kinlaw, and more of a run stopper, you go Derek Brown. They're both incredible players. I think you could see Kinlaw go even higher than this. I really do. What team would take him? I'm not sure, but we're going to give him to the Bucks here. At 15, top three receivers off the board. Broncos in kind of a tough spot here. I think it's either tackle or receiver. And obviously you want someone outside of Cortland Sutton. It's not like Deshaun Hamilton is anything special. Trade away Emmanuel Sanders. And of course, when you look at their tackle situation, Garrett Bowles has been a big question mark ever since they drafted him. It's tough when teams draft these older players because there's really less time to develop them. Um, And you have Jawan James at right tackle. I fully get that. But Wirfs has the ability to not only play on the inside with that athleticism, maybe at right guard, and they have another versatile guy in Reisner there, Dalton Reisner, who they drafted. And Wirfs could eventually take over one of those tackle spots from Jawan James, but more likely Garrett Bowles if he's not um, re-signed or his options not picked up or whatever, and he doesn't necessarily deserve that. So worse here would make a lot of sense, or they could keep LaVisca Chenault in Colorado. They could take T. Higgins. They could take Jalen Rager. They could take Justin Jefferson. They could take Brandon Ayuk. There are a number of wide receivers I could see climbing up the board quite significantly, and even more that I probably didn't even mention. But I, I, I do want to give him a tackle here. I'm going to give him Tristan Wirfs just because he has that versatility where even though tackle's not a gigantic need for them right now. It's going to be, probably. So you play him either as guard for right now, or um, you maybe you even move Garrett Bowles inside. Garrett Bowles is not exceptional. I think Worfs is certainly an upgrade, uh, but he has a versatility to do a number of different things for you. So I think people might be upset with that because wide receiver is a flashier position, but Worfs makes a lot of sense, even if I didn't explain it as well as I maybe wanted to. I think I did an okay job, though. Uh, Falcons at number 16. K. LeVon Chasen makes a lot of sense to me here. He's a really, really good player uh, at LSU. Has incredible athleticism, pretty good edge bend and burst too, obviously. Um, really, really good player. Falcons desperately need someone on the edge, and Chasen fills that need. Uh, Cowboys at 17. I've pretty much given him the same um, pick every time. It's either been Xavier McKinney or Grant Delpit here. I think Delpit's going to fall a little bit. McKinney's a great player. I might give him a cornerback this time around. Byron Jones set to be a free agent. Not sure if he's going to be brought back. I'm going to give him Christian Fulton. We've seen him take LSU corners in the first round before. Shout out to um, Morris Claiborne, who was terrible for them for a number of years before having one good year and becoming a free agent and then not being much after that. Dolphins on the board for the second time in this draft at number 18. Um, Epineza makes some sense here. I think you could definitely make a case for DeAndre Swift. Could take a cornerback. Their cornerbacks are not too great. I know they have Xavier Howard, who's pretty overrated. Um, That doesn't mean bad, by the way, but they could definitely use an upgrade at that spot. Could take Delpit. This is is a tough one. Um, I think they might go tackle here. I think Josh Jones makes a lot of sense. So we're going to go ahead and um, give him Josh Jones out of Houston. Good tackle, great pass blocker. And um, they're going to need some protection for their quarterback, whoever it might be. In this case, it's Tua. But Josh Jones going from Houston to Miami. 
19, Raiders back on the clock as well. Could see Kenneth Murray here, could see a cornerback. Um, maybe they even try and take one of the top safeties in, in Xavier McKinney or Grant Delpit. Although I think what I want to do, I think I want to give him a linebacker. I think Kenneth Murray is going to be my guy here. Or Patrick Queen. I think we're going to give him Patrick Queen, actually. Um, and Patrick Queen, I know he's ranked number 35 on the Draft Network's big board. I think he's a much better player than that. I think Patrick Queen is incredible, and I would certainly not be shocked to see him go inside the top 20. He is a stud and a great pickup for the Raiders there, especially at number 19. So they've had a pretty good draft so far, picking up C.D. Lamb and Patrick Queen. So uh, good for them, I guess, in this make-believe land here. Jaguars back on the clock. We've seen them take linebacker in Isaiah Simmons, if you even want to call him that. And their defense is um, what really needs the most improvement here. Offensive line, not too bad. Not incredible, uh, but not too bad. Could take a cornerback, of course, Jalen Ramsey was traded away. This is one of your first-round picks that you got back for him. Um, and they, I think they have one next year as well. Could take a cornerback in this class. I don't think it's a great CB class out of Jeffrey Okuda, though, um, as far as it being top-heavy. There are some good guys that could definitely go in this range that I like uh, quite a bit, like um, Jeff Gladney out of TCU, I think would make a lot of sense here um, if he was to rise up the board that significantly. I think C.J. Henderson, um, a little bit overrated, being a top-20 player on their board. Didn't have too great of a season at Florida this past year. None of the Florida corners did, um, even though Florida was a great team this past year. But who do we want to go here? I don't think we take safety. I think they're fine at safety for the time being. I like Ronnie Harrison quite a bit. Um, I know you need two, and could take one of them here. I, I don't know. I've given them cornerback so many times here. I think it's been C.J. Henderson a lot or uh, Christian Fulton who I had going earlier. Hmm, this is tough. i got to make a decision here. I am going to cop out and give them C.J. Henderson. That's your Jalen Ramsey replacement. There you go. Um, Philadelphia Eagles on the board here, 21. Need corner badly. Cornerback's a super weak position. They got torched in the secondary. I could see them taking a safety here too. Um, like really, I could. Xavier McKinney would make a lot of sense playing over the top. Keep having Malcolm Jenkins play his role, which is versatility, playing in the box, uh, being that typical strong safety with some extra added versatility for sure. Uh, my nose is so itchy. I'm sorry. I keep touching it. I might give him a safety here. I, I know that's going to be unpopular. It's either safety or wide receiver. I don't think they take LaVisca Chenault. Um, could take T. Higgins. T, they've moved uh, their board quite a bit. T. Higgins is a, a number 36 now. And I think with Nelson, uh, Nelson Aguilar being bad, <laughs> Jalen Rager would make a lot of sense to pencil in. What do they do? And apparently Alshon Jeffrey would be interested in a trade out of Philadelphia, which is interesting, to say the least. I'm going to give the Eagles a wide receiver, and I think I've talked myself into Jalen Rager as your, as your Nelson Aguilar upgrade. And now the Bills are in number 22. I've given them T. Higgins every single mock draft I've done, I think. We're going to mix it up. We're going to give them... I mean, they need a bigger body. We're going to give them Justin Jefferson. He's, what, 6'3"? 6'3", about 200. Jefferson's a good player. I've given them T. Higgins quite a bit, but I think Justin Jefferson makes a lot of sense in that range as well. Now the Patriots are on the board. This is really, in my opinion... Um, defensive line, which could be interior or on the edge or tight end. None of the tight ends have fallen here. or Well, excuse me, none of the tight ends have been drafted ahead of them. They've all fallen. Where do they go here? Could take a safety as well. Um, although I think they're probably going to stick with Patrick Chung and Deron Harmon a little while longer. Devin McCourty's a free agent. It's interesting. We got to remember those type of things. Xavier McKinney's still available. Grant Elpitt's still available. I'm going to cop out. I'm going to give him A.J. Epineza, maybe the best player available. And now the Saints are on the clock at number 24. They'd probably be quite upset that Justin Jefferson and Jalen Rager are off the board. I think better fits for them than T. Higgins. What would they do at this range? I think Kenneth Murray makes a lot of sense. Go linebacker. It's a position of need for them. They are pretty weak in there. Could upgrade Andrus Pete. And this is probably about the range that we'd see the first interior offensive lineman go. Uh, but I'm going to give him Kenneth Murray instead. Vikings now on the clock. 
could take a cornerback. Trayvon Diggs, again, makes so much sense. I know they're having a lot of issues with Stefan Diggs with, uh, like, I don't want to say attitude, but it, it really, it's off the field issues and, and just weird stuff and him not wanting to be there, really. So to take his brother would be kind of a weird move. However, it's exactly the profile type of guy that Mike Zimmer would want. Big, tall, physical, great length. That's what he looks for. Uh, Jeff Gladney, also a good guy. Good length to him. And I say that, good frame, size. Um, plays big, long arms. And um, fit their scheme, press, press man. Um, Noah Igbenogany, another guy with some good speed. He's less technically good, in my opinion, off of uh, doing some tape study on him. But not a bad player, just doesn't really turn around and find the football ever, which is a problem. I think we might go I-O-L here, interior offensive line. They already have their center in Garrett Bradbury, so Lloyd Cushenberry, unless you want to play him at a different position. I-O-L is kind of uh, interchangeable in some ways. Could take Cesar Ruiz. Um, but, I mean, I, I guess really the top offensive linemen in this class are centers more than guards, which is interesting. I mean, we've only seen, what, two corners go? I just don't believe that the Vikings would take a chance on another Diggs. I, I, or maybe they would to keep Stefan there like with good spirits. I have no idea. It's just such a weird situation. I don't see that happening. We're going to give them... Would they really take interior offensive line two years in a row? That's such a tough spot. Got to protect Kirk Cousins. I, I can't give him Trayvon Diggs. I can't. I can't rationalize it at this point. I really can't. Jeff Gladney it is. All right. I'm not happy about it, but that's that's where we're going. Um, Dolphins back on the board at number 26. We've given him Josh Jones. We've given him Tua, Tongo Bailoa. Not sure that a running back goes in the first round, but if there was a spot, this might be it. I'm going to give him a safety, though. And I'm going to give him... Um, Grant Delpit. I think they need more of a strong safety. Not that Xavier McKinney can't play that role, by the way. Um, but they need the Rashad uh, Rashad Jones upgrade. I think Delpit fills that. I think Bobby McCain might slide back to free safety. Um, and I think he did do that after Minka Fitzpatrick was traded away. But I think Grant Delpit is a, is a big upgrade, a big addition to that defense. Good player. I'm kind of surprised I have him going above Xavier McKinney, but here we are. And now the Seahawks on the board, number 27. I'm not sure that wide receiver is their second biggest need. I don't think that it is. I think any offensive line spot, then IDL, and then, like, along with edge probably fits there. I almost want to give them your Tur Gross Matos here, but I think they would be more inclined to take a player like Terrell Lewis just because of athleticism and upside. So I'm going to go ahead and give the Seahawks Terrell Lewis there at 27. And I think... The Ravens, very upset they can't take a player from Alabama, especially on defense here in the first round. Well, a lot of needs for them. I think Xavier McKinney would make a lot of sense with um, Earl Thomas kind of declining a little bit, with Tony Jefferson being released, with them really needing some more help at safety in general. I love Deshaun Elliott, but the guy just can't stay healthy. Um, Xavier McKinney makes a lot of sense. I'm going to give him Xavier McKinney. Edge is a big need, but McKinney's a stud. And they get their Alabama player in the first round anyway. That's fun. I know Ozzie Smith isn't making the... Uh, nope. I know Ozzie Newsom's not making the, the uh, picks anymore. Ozzie Smith, the St. Louis Cardinals shortstop. Give me a break. No, Ozzie Newsom, former GM, isn't making the picks anymore. But he's still in that organization. And Xavier McKinney is a stud player. Titans at number 29. Um, this is where the first offensive lineman's going to go on the interior. And we are going to give them Lloyd Cushenberry out of LSU. Good center, and um, that's probably where they'll play him, or maybe even move him over to guard. I mean, who's their starting center right now? Ben Jones? Is he a free agent? He might be. I don't think so, but he's also not great. Cushenberry's a really good player, and we're going to give him them. Uh, top need for the Packers, according to the Draft Network, is offensive tackle, and that's because they're losing Brian Bulaga at right tackle, potentially, to free agency. Um, obviously, David Bakhtiari at left tackle is still a stud. I don't think tight end is their third biggest need either. Drafted Jay Sternberger last year. 
Still haven't seen a running back go. Um, who do we who do we have for the Packers here? Any good right tackles available? I don't love the remaining tackle. Niang's pretty good to be, and Austin Jackson's pretty good to be fair, as well. Um, I don't know. I mean, there's there's some some talented guys here. I just don't know that the, the tackle would go at that spot. I feel like it'd be maybe Austin Jackson if anybody. I think we'd almost be more inclined to see a receiver go here. And I think this is probably... I like KJ Hamler at this spot, or Brandon Ayuk. Almost, but I don't think T. Higgins falls out of the first round. I can see LaVisca, even though I'm not in love with T. Higgins. Um, I think Brandon Ayuk makes a lot more sense for the Packers than any of these other receivers. So I'm going to go ahead and slide Brandon Ayuk to the Packers at number 30. People are going to be pissing me that I don't have T. Higgins or LaVisca Chenault in the first round. You can cry about it. I don't care. 49ers at number 31. Um, I think this has to be a cornerback. Has to be. And we're going to give him Trayvon Diggs out of Alabama. Former receiver, great ball skills. Um, their corners kind of got torched, even in the Super Bowl as well. Look at Richard Sherman. Trayvon Diggs is a beast. Um, offers you some great size too, along with Richard Sherman. Good boundary corner. Now, the Chiefs at number 32. I've given them running back before in this spot. I don't think they take interior offensive line. Um, I think that's a position where they're actually not too bad. Laurent Duvernay-Tardif is quite good. Um, Andrew Wiley. Andrew? Austin? Andrew Wiley. I think has played some left guard for them and has been pretty good in that role. I don't really know that they need interior offensive line that badly. Maybe a center. But I think I think they're somewhat fine there. I think their offensive line has, has played well enough. If anything, I, you could make an argument that they need tackle more than interior offensive line. I think this is almost this is cornerback or running back, in my opinion. DeAndre Swift or um, J.K. Dobbins would do so much for their offense, but I think their secondary is just so poor. And I think Damon Arnett is going to be my pick here. Damon Arnett is a really really fun player. Um, great speed, great ability, but. Still probably the third best cornerback on that Ohio State team last year, which is, I mean, that just shows you how good they've been with um, with how good like guys like Jeff Okuda have been and even other guys in the league for a while now. Safety and cornerback, I mean, they, they produce these guys like crazy. They are probably the new DBU. Uh, I know LSU is quite good too, and of course I'm a Texas Longhorns fan, but they haven't really held that title for a while. Bengals back on the board at number 33. We're going to start to fly through this a little bit more. I'm going to take a, a more best available approach. They're losing A.J. Green. Let's give him a receiver, uh, and let's stop the fall of T. Higgins, and they get their kind of A.J. Green size profile back. I think T. T. Higgins is 6'4". Yeah, 6'4", 215. What's A.J. Green? 6'4", 210, maybe somewhere in that range. I know he's not quite as heavy as like a guy like Julio Jones, who's 6'3", who's like 225, 230. Um, a bit more slender. But T. Higgins, big body, goes along with Tyler Boyd. Um that's their A.J. Green replacement to go along with Joe Burrow. LSQ Clemson, shout out national championship from rivals to teammates. Fun storyline. And now, and now, could go defensive line as well. But um, Jordan Love available in the second round at 34. The Colts are ecstatic. They don't have to take him at 13. They get Jordan Love somehow anyway. Lions on the board. Top linebackers, gone. Still some good players at edge. Yutur Gross Matos, Zach Vaughn, Curtis Weaver, Jonathan Grenard. Some good players in there for sure. Could go wide receiver. Kenny Galladay's a stud. Don't get me wrong. Expiring contract in two years. Marvin Jones getting a bit older. Still a good player. Expiring contract in two years. Could take receiver. Could take edge. I'm going to go ahead and uh, say they need edge pretty bad. Or we could go IDL here. Could go IDL. Ross Blacklock is a good player. Raekwon Davis still available. I don't love the ceiling of Neville Gallimore. I think he's got a very high floor, though. Hmm. I almost want to give him IDL. I really do. I think I'm going to, in fact. I'm going to give him uh, Raekwon Davis. Giants back in the board. Again, my favorite team. I gotta, But I got to think, what are they going to do? Not what would I want them to do. And I still haven't given a running back. I still haven't given anyone a running back. I just think it's a position that's uh, less valuable than it's been in years past. Um, 
I think one of the running backs who's higher. People are going to be so mad. I still don't care. But why do I keep bringing it up? That's a good point. Giants at 36. They need edge so bad. They need linebacker so badly. Is Akeem Davis Gaither here? He is. I think he's higher than 115 probably. I don't know here. I don't know what I want for them. I think probably edge is the most likely. I don't really want to take a cornerback at this spot. We're going to give him Yatur Gross Matos. Chargers back on the board at 37. Their offensive line is terrible. Where is Lucas Niang? There he is. Lucas Niang to the Chargers at 37, protecting their new quarterback. Justin Herbert, that's who we have. Panthers back in the spot. They've committed to Cam Newton. That we came out today. Quarterback, no longer really a big need for them. But they do have to commit to protecting him. So interior offensive line could be the move here. Cesar Ruiz, Matt Hennessy. Both these guys are centers, if I'm not wrong. I think Ruiz played center. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's that's the NFL comp is to a center, Eric Wood. Um, who was a good center for a long time with the Bills before he retired. I mean, they do need that. Could take a cornerback. Let's give him let's give him interior offensive line. Cesar Ruiz to the Panthers. Dolphins back again. Back again. Their fourth pick here. And this is where the first running back goes. DeAndre Swift. Boom. Not going to spend too much time on that. Cardinals back on the clock. This is where another tackle goes. It's Austin Jackson. We gave him a receiver. Now they get their tackle in the second round. Browns back on the board. We've given him one tackle. They could use another. Prince Tegawinogo makes some sense here. Who was the first tackle that I gave them though? I gave them Andrew Thomas. So that's really their left side guy. Isaiah Wilson plays right tackle. I think. I think it's correct. I don't want to be incorrect with that, but I, th I think that's accurate. Um, they could go even receiver here, man. Receiver is an interesting spot for them. What do we want here? Could give him another versatile puzzle piece, in Antoine Winfield Jr. I don't even hate that. I'm gonna give him. I'm gonna give him Antoine Winfield Jr. Jaguars back on the board at 42. Let's give him. I think Ross Blacklock. I like that. I like that quite a bit to the Jags at 42. Bears on the board for the first time in this class. Trey Burton really hasn't worked out too much for them. We're gonna give him a tight end, and that is going to be the. You know, arguably the best tight end in the draft, Bryson Hopkins. I still can't believe they have Albert Okwa Ibanam rated so low. Player I liked quite a bit two years ago at Mizzou. Haven't gotten a chance to watch him this year. Um, so maybe hasn't had it this year, didn't develop the way anticipated, but that's okay. Number 44, Colt, back on the board again. IDL makes a lot of sense to me here. Um, who's it? Yeah, we're going to give him, we're going to give him Neville Gallimore. We're going to give him Neville Gallimore. Uh, Bucks at number 45. Potential uh, Jameis Winston two-year contract, I hear. They need tackle really, really badly. Donovan Smith is bad, and they extended him to a big contract. And then at right tackle, it's an aging position. Um, I want to say their starting right tackle is like 35. DeMar Dotson, 33 maybe. He's old, somewhere in that range. Also, not too good. Could take QB, develop Jacob Eason. I don't hate that. I don't hate that. Yeah, we're going to give him Jacob Eason. Why not? Uh, Broncos at number 46. We're going to give him a receiver. LaVisca Chenault still available. Keeping him in Colorado. There you go. 47, we got the Falcons. We've given him an edge. Let's go ahead and give them uh, a running back. And the reason I say this is potentially cutting Devontae Freeman. Don't have Tevin Coleman. Let's give him Jonathan Taylor. We've seen with this style of running back, they've been super effective in years past. Talk about Michael Taylor. Pretty good player for them. Uh, don't know why I said Taylor. Michael Turner. I'm brain dead today. But he was a good player for them. J.K. Dobbins makes some sense too. But uh, we're going to give him a bell cow running back. Kind of take the heat off the passing game a little bit. And uh, that's going to be Jonathan Taylor. Jets back on the board. Let's give him a receiver. And let's go with... Um, I feel like they already have like a KJ Hamler style player 
And by that, I basically mean their slot guy in um, Jamison Crowder. So we're going to go ahead and give them... I don't mind Brian Edwards here, but I'm going to give them Donovan Peoples-Jones. 49, we got the Steelers making their first pick of the draft. And um, what's available? Zach Bond? I'm down. They get a, a nice edge to go alongside uh, TJ Watt. Bears back on the board. Is quarterback an option? <laughs> it definitely is something they could take here. Would they take one in the second round? Uh, I think it's unlikely, given the rest of their holes. Don't think running back. Cornerback, I could definitely see. Could definitely see edge as well. I feel like there needs to be someone on the other side of Khalil Mack. Um, Leonard Floyd is a decent player. I don't think he really gets it done. So I'm going to give him... I want to go edge here. I do. Could ta see a better tackling safety come up, and that would be Ashton Davis for sure. Or Kyle Duggar's a huge guy, by the way. He's, what, 6'1", 217 at safety? That's gigantic. Alohi Gilman's a great tackling safety as well. I mean, I like all these guys. Both all sound tacklers. Let's give him, let's give him a cornerback. Let's go Cameron Dantzler out of Mississippi State. And now the Cowboys are back on the clock at 51. They've already taken secondary. Would they do it again? And that would be a safety for sure. They need a Jeff Heath upgrade badly. And I think um, I think they might. Let's give them a Lohi Gilman out of Notre Dame. We get the Rams on the clock for the first time. And I think tackle is such a huge need for them. Some good edge rushers available that would definitely fill needs, and we might end up going in that direction. But with um, Andrew Whitworth being, what, 38 years old, not having too much at right tackle either, tackle is a huge, huge need for them. It is. That's tough. I also wouldn't be shocked to see them take running back in this draft, but not this high. Um... I think I think we're gonna go. I think we're gonna go. I think we're gonna go edge here. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Julian Aquara out of Notre Dame. Eagles on the clock again. This is where we're gonna see a cornerback go. Um, they need some speed in that secondary. Noah Igbenogany goes out of Auburn to the Eagles. Bills back on the clock. This is a no-brainer edge spot for me, and I think Curtis Weaver is gonna fill that role pretty well. Falcons. At number 55, my voice is going out on me. I apologize. Could take corner. Need an upgrade outside of Desmond Trufant for sure. Isaiah Oliver's in there, I know. I don't really like these cornerbacks at this spot, so I might go IDL. Marlon Davidson, for sure. I think he might even go a lot higher than 55. He's a beast. He's a beast. Also, another versatile guy. I think he would fit in really, really well. Dolphins on the clock again, making another pick. And we have an addressed edge. We're going to keep Jonathan Grenard in state out of Florida. Keep him in Florida, going south to Miami. Now the Texans. Could go best running back available, J.K. Dobbins. This would be great value. Great value there. Cornerback edge. I mean, I, I like those for them too. Um... I'm going to give him J.K. Dobbins. It's kind of like the no-brainer selection. Vikings back on the clock. Do we just say, hey, screw it, give him IDL anyway, or IOL anyway, interior offensive line? There's some good defensive tackles available still. Um, Robert Hunt plays guard, so we're going to give him a guard. And um, Robert Hunt to the Vikings is a pick at 58. Seahawks back on the clock at 59. This is a good K.J. Hamler spot, honestly. So that is where we're going to give him. And the reason I say that, they've got their size jump ball guy in DK Metcalf. They got their do it all possession slash slot guy in Tyler Lockett, who also does a lot of great work on the outside. KJ Hamler could be that more traditional slot for them. Also, line him up the outside, deep threat. I know he's only 5'9, 176, but he can run past people. Could be like their Tyree Kill style weapon. 60, we have the Ravens picking again. This is an edge spot for sure, in my opinion, or wide receiver. Or wide receiver. I hesitated to give him the wide receiver in the first round. Uh, Josh Uche. I almost prefer Khalid Kareem at this spot. I'm going to give him Josh Uche anyway. Um, offers some versatility. 
I don't think he's just a pure edge. Only six foot one, um, but offers versatility to be stand up as well. And I think uh, that's exactly what the Ravens thrive off of in their current uh, scheme. Now we got the Titans. Another classic edge spot. I'm going to go Khalid Kareem here. I don't know enough about Darrell Taylor to slot him in. He's not going to be drafted in the uh, in the second round for me here. Packers back on the clock. We're going to go offensive tackle. I'm going to give him Isaiah Wilson at right tackle. Chiefs could go running back. I don't love these running backs for them, though, so I'm not going to do that. So I think it's going to be linebacker, and I think it's going to be either Troy Die. Yeah, we're going to give him Troy Die. And then the Seahawks round things out by taking... Giving him edge. With Clowney being a free agent, they could even take another one. Giving him wide receiver. Will they finally go offensive line? I mean, they hesitate to do so all the time. They just had so many injuries across the offensive line last year. I'm not sure that they really go that. They, they never do. I'm going to give him Justin Matabuike out of Texas A&M. And that is my two-round draft. That is my two-round mock draft. Hope you guys enjoyed. I know everyone's going to disagree with me. It goes with... Uh, doing these. I know what I got myself into, but that is going to do it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.